right, hi everyone. This is Amanda Lansing, Chairwoman for the Conservation Commission. Time is 6.02 p.m. on Monday, uh, June 29th. And so I will now declare this special meeting of the Lemonster Conservation Commission open. Um, again, just a reminder that um, we are currently still following guidelines pertaining to COVID-19. All of our meetings are still being held remotely. Um, so um, this meeting is being recorded um, along with anything you say over the phone and any of the chats will become part of the public record for tonight. Um, so tonight's uh, special meeting, we'll go down to our, um, our new hearing here. Pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, the Lemonster Conservation Commission will hold a special public meeting on June 29th, 2020 at 6 p.m. on a request for determination filed for the demolition of structures and foundations on the property listed below. The work takes place in a floodplain resource area. The address is 112 Central Street, 106 Central Street, 124 Central Street, and 16 Cross Street. Map and parcel numbers 93-6, 93-5, 93-7, 93-12. Do we have somebody on the call representing this project? Hi, everyone. This is Angela Chavesky, the conservation agent for the city of London, sir. Um, I am representing this project for the city currently. Um, so basically, I'm going to pull up some plans for everyone to look at. These are the plans that we have. They were done by Whitnam and Bingham <clears throat> on part of the city's request. The new police station will be constructed um, over on Central Street right here, which is 112 Central Street. Um, after some further evaluation, it was discovered that this lot in the area is completely in the floodplain. So it does require permitting through the Conservation Commission per the Wetland Protection Act. Um, the floodplain resource area is a resource area that is of jurisdiction. I'm just gonna highlight the approximate floodplain for everyone to see a little bit clearer. It basically goes across the entire site. The buildings that are going to be taken down um, are 106, 112, the shed here, uh, the concrete slabs will all need to be removed, as well as um, Lincoln Street School, which is over here, um, which will also need to be torn down. All of these are in the jurisdictional floodplain. So it does require um, a permit through the Conservation Commission. Do any of the members have any questions? This is Amanda Lansing. Um, Angela, I do have a question because um, there wasn't a whole lot of detail um, in this filing as far as um, what the demolition actually included. So if it's just buildings, does it include foundations? Does it include um, any sort of, you know, utilities or pavement that needs to be ripped up in order to, you know, do any kind of regrading? Um, I'm, I'm curious what the demolition actually includes. Um, this is Angela Shrefsky for the City of London, so once again. Um, so as far as I know, um, I wasn't necessarily um, supposed to be doing this filing. I did it because the, um, unfortunately, the contractor was on site. He really wanted to start the demo, um, and the engineer that we had hired for this did not put the filing in for the work, and I was unable to sign off on the demo permit due to that. But all of the buildings are within the floodplain, which um, will be taken down. All the foundations, sheds, um, pavement right over here. Any sort of structure that's going to be stripped, it's going to be, everything will be removed and we left a fresh site in order for construction to begin on the new police station. I do believe, I know for Lincoln Street School, I believe, I know all the utilities have to be shut off 
before they can be shut off and capped in most situations before they, the demo can occur um, and before most city departments can sign off on the demo demolition permit. Okay, and just um, just so that the commission is, is is all clear, this per this filing just pertains to the demolition to prepare the site for the actual um, construction that's going to be done there. Correct. Correct. There should be no other site work taking place. Um, okay, great. Um, do any of our other commission members have questions or concerns? Um, um, so, my thoughts? Uh, <laughs> sorry, uh, this is Elizabeth Ricci. Um, so, I do we know how far, how much lower this grading is going to be, or if it's even going to be lower, or like, I mean, I, I feel like there's info missing. Hi, Andrew Trubesky, once again, the conservation agent <clears throat> and representing this project for the city. Um, this was the information that was given with these plans that were done by Whitman and Bangham, um, and I was told that they, you know, they need to sign the demo permit. The demo permit doesn't have that sort of information, um, so I don't know how far down. I know that they will be removing them. And I do know there will be some exploratory borings done, which typically those are exempt anyways. But um, I do know that that needs to be done after all the buildings are, and all the concrete and materials are removed from the site. I don't know what their proposed final grade is. Liz, does that answer your question? Do you have any, any follow-ups or additional concerns? I mean, it does and doesn't answer my question. Um, I guess the answer is like, I, that uh, it's unknown at this time. So, um, yeah, I don't, I'm, I'm gonna have to look at this a little bit longer. Um, I can most definitely try to find out. Um, <clears throat> I will. I would have to ask the engineers who are doing the project. Um, I'm trying to send a message to the project one of the project managers to see if they have that information right now. This is Amanda again. Um, Sam, do you have any? Um, any comments, concerns, questions? Uh, not necessarily, no. Uh, between the conversation here, all the kind of questions and little things I was wondering have been answered, so I'm all set. Okay, thank you. Um, this is Amanda Lansing again, the chairwoman. Um, I, I feel uh, that this filing is missing a lot of information um, that we kind of need um, to make a decision on this. Um, my experience working in floodplain typically with a with a project like this, um, if they were just maybe uh, taking down buildings, perhaps an RDA would be okay, but from from the limited information that we do have, it seems that this includes not only removing buildings, but also foundations, pavement, um, things like that that affect the the elevations of the floodplain. Um, and I kind of just want to state for uh, for the record so that people understand, um, as Angela mentioned, the uh, the FEMA floodplain is a state protected resource area. Um, it's protected under the Wetlands Protection Act and its importance is, um, it, it's, it's a difficult resource area sometimes because it's not something you can see, but uh, flood storage capacity is extremely important. Um, and if we are, 
in projects like this, I like to be able to know what our starting elevation is and be able to ensure that when we're done, we haven't changed the flood storage capacity. Um, because if we change the flood storage capacity and have not compensated for it, it can cause issues on other properties maybe um, that have never had flooding issues before. If we put in too many impermeable surfaces and there's not enough places for the water to go, it's gonna run across some of those impermeable surfaces and try to find a place that it can sink into the ground or a stream or a wetland. Um, I guess my, what I also would like to state is just that um, the project itself, the, the, the demo and the building of a new police station, um, I do not have a problem with. I, um, I think it's wonderful that the city wants to build a new police station. Um, I am the daughter of a former police officer and the wife of a current police officer. And so I understand, um, what it means to police department, you know, police forces to have um, a nice facility to be able to work out of. Um, but I'm I'm concerned that we were given a filing with uh, with very limited information and explanation. Um, and technically, if if as part of demo, they are going to be breaking ground and and digging and changing the flood storage capacity um, on a big project like this, I'm not sure that I'm comfortable with with doing this under an RDA. Um, I guess for for the moment, that's kind of my two cents. If uh, if the other commissioners want to want to weigh in at all, please do. Um. Angela Trusky, conservation agent for the city of London, sir. I do want to say, I don't, I don't believe they're going to be changing any of the grades other than the areas that they are going to be um, removing the foundations, removing concrete slabs, removing buildings. Um, I believe those areas will be filled, but obviously because of the giant holes in the ground. Um, but as I, I'm not the engineer for the project, I don't have the final number. That I just wanted to clarify that. Um, I also wanted to say, I did, due to the fact that the contractor was on site, the day I received the demo permit to sign off on, and I was unable to sign off on it because they didn't have the correct permit from the Conservation Commission. Um, they did have permission to take down the structures alone that were out of the floodplain, as long as they were above the floodplain per these plans, which I do believe they did. I'm, um, I don't go by that way often, so I don't know if they did any other work, and they were supposed to, they're waiting to demo the Lincoln Street School, which is over on Cross Street, um, until this permitting is issued. This is Amanda again. Great. Thank you uh, for that clarification, Angela. Um, and yeah, so so while I can understand that maybe the grading isn't changing a lot because they can't just leave, you know, a, a hole in the ground, I think during the process of demolition, though, they're still going to be altering a protected resource area um, pretty significantly until they can get it back to grade. And even then it's going to change because of um, there's going to be more impermeable surfaces. And it's just, it's for how much they do have to disturb, because for most of these projects, they're not, um, you know, maybe permanently altering anything for too long. Um, but given that the majority of the work is is within a protected resource area and they are going to have to break ground to do it, um, that's where my concern lies in um, in permitting this under an RDA because I, I can just see a lot of issues. Um, but I would like to hear uh, from our other commissioners, if you wish, if you have similar opinions or different opinions, um, please go ahead. Uh, this is Elizabeth. Um, and the other thing is like, with an RDA as opposed to an, an NOI, um, we obviously have more limited 
like in case something goes wrong, we have a more limited uh, capacity to enforce things. I, from what I understand, correct? This is Amanda. Um, yes, that's correct. Thank you, Amanda. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, the the other thing, yeah, so that is correct, Liz. Um, under an order of conditions, um, it, we do have the ability to um, enforce uh, special conditions if we um, if we wish, and the requirements for um, issuing that order of conditions are are a bit stricter, um, and applicants need to provide um, as built plans at the end so that they can show us that the work was done in accordance with the plans that we were given when we first reviewed the project. Um, under a request for determination, we don't have all of those um, abilities because uh, they don't technically get recorded the way that an order of conditions does. Um, and we don't have a whole lot of flexibility in, in what we can ask of of the applicants or the people who are doing the work. Um, I, yeah, so. Uh, this is Elizabeth. Yeah, so for like, I mean, this is a big project. So I'm kind of hesitant um, to go with just, uh, you know, the um, RDA. Okay, um, Sam, do you have any anything to add? Uh, pretty much on the same similar concerns as uh, Liz here. Uh, I, I just feel like with how big a project this is, where it seems like a pretty sizable amount of demo going on, and seems to be a lot of holes in the plan and just stuff that we'd really like to know. It, like issuing an RDA, I feel like we should have a lot more confidence in some plans than we than we do in this situation. So I, I just don't necessarily feel confident issuing an RD for this one like right now with, with the information we have. This is Amanda Lansing, Chairman again. Um, thank you, Liz and Sam. Um, I also would like to say, and um, I do very much appreciate um, that the agent was willing to represent the city on this project. I understand that this is a project that they they want to get going as soon as possible, um, but for a project that that this is my um, my own personal opinion. Um, but I do I do want to state it because it is a little bit of a concern for me. Um, this is a very big project um, inside of a protected resource area, and and floodplain can be a little tricky to to deal with sometimes. Um, as a commission, we often rely on our conservation agents' um, um, guidance um, and and recommendations um, because often the agent is a, is a bit more well versed in um, the regulations, has some additional resources at their disposal to help commissioners understand, um, you know, kind of what's going on if there's any questions. For a big project like this, um, I personally feel it kind of puts us and our agent in a little bit of a precarious situation because um, as a representative of this project, she is unable to give us guidance or uh, or recommendations um, based on the thorough review that she typically does of projects um, like this. So, and additionally, because of that, we don't have a whole lot of information except for the plan that's in front of us. Um, I personally would have loved to be able to hear from either uh, the engineers who drew up the plans or the people who are actually going to be doing the work um, so that we could have a little bit of a, of a better understanding of what's going on. Um, if that is something that we're unable to do, then then so be it. In that case, I would 
I would feel very strongly that a notice of intent would be required so that we have so that we have all the information and and the detail um, that's required. There's also the Wetlands Protection Act is very clear on work within a floodplain, um, and there are performance standards that do need to be met. Um, and I, I don't think that asking for a notice of intent is, um, it, it's not, it's something that we would ask of any other applicant doing a project of this size in a protected resource area. Um, so again, I personally don't have a problem with the project itself, but I believe that the environmental permitting for this is just as important as any of the other permits that needed to be obtained in order to uh, in order to do this. So I guess that's uh, that's kind of my uh, my opinion, my thinking on this project. Um, before I open it up to um, public comment, do any of our commissioners have any other questions or concerns or, or does our uh, agent who is acting as the representative have any um, additional information to share? Uh, this is Angela Chavez, the conservation agent also representing this project for the city. Um, the only other information I want to offer up is that um, you know, they aren't doing the construction, obviously, under the RDA. They are, were advised that they do need to do that under an NOI back in February. Uh, so this RDA permit is just so that they could continue the demo work um, that they basically started. Okay, this, yeah, this is Amanda Lansing. Thank you, Angela. Um, Angela, could you please remind me, I, I think you stated it before and I just, um, I may have missed it. Um, has any of this work started yet? Um, Angela Trescu, the conservation agent for the city of Lemonster. Um, as far as I know, all I allowed was the removal of the buildings that were out of or above of the floodplain um, elevation, which is 390, 398.3 from the NAVID 88. Um, so that was going to be a couple of the lanes that had, they had stories above that. So they were going to take those down um, on Central Street, the ones with two family home and a three family home. The only buildings that were going to be done, they were going to wait for the permitting before they um, continued any other work, other than exempt, um, obviously, exploratory work. This is Amanda Lansing, the chairwoman again. Okay, thank you. Um, so, okay, so the, the work on the actual police station, they were advised back in February that they have to do under notice of intent. So that should be coming before us at some point. Um, It still concerns me um, how how big this project is, and that they even started demolition before. You know, I appreciate that they that they worked with you, and that you were able to at least get out there and and give them the okay to um, to do that. But the, I just feel the way that the. Uh, the regulations are and and what we would ask of most applicants is that for a project of this size um this should have been brought before us before the demolition permit was even um passed around to be signed um i i feel that neither myself nor the rest of the commission has really had a lot of time to um review and understand this project um and if it's you know and if they've already started um it's a little concerning to me that that this didn't come before you know before the commission um prior to them starting work at all so 
I guess I will. Um, sorry, if I may interrupt, sorry. <clears throat> um, I just okay, received sorry. the conservation agent. Um, I did just receive a text message, um, but I just wanted to read it in. Basically, they just want to reiterate that this is just a request to demo the buildings, um, and then they'll need to do full engineering afterwards. But they are that they won't be able to do that until all of the buildings in the site is ready for that. Um, the site will be specifically engineered for the flood zone, um, which is what I was told. I believe the mayor will be calling in. I just wanted to re reiterate that. Right, so so it's for the demolition of the buildings, but I thought it was mentioned though that they were going to be taking out foundations and some pavement as well. Um, Angela Chvesky here once again from the um, Atlanta Conservation Department. Yes, that was what the um, contractor, Ms. Ray from, I, I'm gonna have a hard time saying his last name, um, Berg, Bourgeois and um, Excavating had told me that they were doing. Um, when I had contacted them about the lack of permitting and the need for permitting for this project, they told me that they needed to remove all the concrete slabs out, all of the buildings, um, and fill in the foundations after they were done. So I'm getting, I mean, I'm personally getting conflicted, conflicted information, so I apologize. Okay, no, that that's okay. This is Amanda Lansing again. Um, I, I guess again, I, I'm not. I'm not trying to be, um, you know, overly strict or or hold this project up at all. But I really think that we need a lot more information. Um, you know, I recognize that they just want to do the demolition, and I appreciate that they're gonna they're gonna give us a full filing for um, the actual new construction of of the police station and everything that's associated with it, but um the demolition of everything on this site is still within resource area um and it's still just as important that we have the ability to um protect it should something happen um so i'm very hesitant um to I'm very hesitant to make a decision tonight. Um, my thinking would would be if there was any um, opinion that we would do this under an RDA, that I would want more information um, on what this RDA actually covers, because it seems like there's not really a clear, concise um, answer to that question. It's very hard for the commission to make a decision on a project when we don't actually fully understand what what the project entails. Um, and in floodplain particularly, that's extremely important because, you know, if it truly is just buildings that are above the floodplain and that's it, then, you know, a, de a decision might be a little bit different than if they're going through and having to take foundation out and break up concrete and break up pavement. Um, it can sort of, it, it can, it can change things. Um, so I guess I would appreciate if either one of our, our other commissioners has anything additional to add, but I would say if there was even a thought of permitting this under an RDA, I would like to see a significant amount of uh, more just clear cut information on what the project entails, or I would like to see just a notice of intent that has all of that information in it. And then we can go ahead with, um, with an order of conditions that allows us to actually just ensure that, that the project is done um, the way that we're being told it's going to be done. I think that's the the concern on a large project like this. Um, Angela Chvesky, once again, for the City of Lemon, sir, representing the project. I just want to clarify <clears throat> that the RDA, in the, in the specific RDA, um, the boxes that were checked were um, to determine whether the area depicted on the plans reference flows in areas subject to the jurisdiction of the Wetland Protection Act 
in the whether the work depicted on the plans reference below the subject of those wetland protection acts um, and the actual work description was demolition of all structures on the above property and removal of material associated with the structures which would include foundations pavements, um, and driveways the, you know there would be you know no other work associated with it well i, I do understand what you're saying um that's what the permit application is for mm -hmm. this is amanda lansing again yes thank you angela i did um i did see that um in my opinion, it's very clear that that this work is within an area subject to protection under the Act. I guess um, my biggest concern is uh, what specific work is actually being done, um, just so that we have an understanding of 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 what's actually being altered. Um, I guess that's where my my hesitation is lying is that i i did read the permit application um and i did see you know that that's what it says but sort of a statement of associated materials is sorry man uh, i am um, going to mute some of the callers that have called and just because we we're getting some back we we're getting some background noise i'm sorry about that Oh, that's okay. No problem. Um, yeah, I guess I would have just liked a little bit more detail when it says, you know, demolition of the structures and associated materials um, is is what that actually means. Um, because this is a lot of I, it's it's a big project. It's a big project. Angie, Angie, can I can I can I speak, please, Dean? Hi, Dean. Um, Angela Schweitzer, the conservation agent. Um, Amanda, did you open it to the public yet so Dean could speak? Um, yep, I will open it in just a second. Um, I just wanted to know if I, if either of our any commissioners have any other questions before we do open it up to the public um, that we've not already stated or talked about. This is Liz. I'm all set. Thank you, Liz. This is uh, Sam Gallagher. I'm all set as well, uh, as far as further questions. Thank you, Sam. Okay, so I will now open uh, this project up to public comment. If you could please just state your name for the record before you speak, I would appreciate it. Dean Mazzarella. And so this, when they say other um, associated materials, there is concrete pads that are, are around the buildings. There are There is black top that is there that has excuse me that has to be uh taken up and brought to um disposed and then ground up at keating so all of those materials have to be separated and um there's been um test, we, we've done we removed uh, oil tanks the asbestos in the buildings has been removed we've had three asbestos studies so this is simply just demolishing the buildings he restores it if you've driven by he restores it back um, better than it actually looked before he slopes it, and uh, and then we we start to work on the engineering for the new project. We can't make any decisions right now because we're trying to design the building so that it fits in with the um, with with the floodplain. The other issue is we're not even sure it's in the floodplain. We could spend a whole lot of time with uh, wooden and current and trying to make a case that it isn't, but that's going to take longer than than it would if we just go ahead and build a building consistent with building it into the floodplain and designing it for the floodplain than it would if we just built the building. So that's what the explanation is of other materials and other soils is there was a concrete pad around one of the buildings, a complete concrete pad that is, um, I don't know, it was a loading dock or whatever it was, but that, that has to be disposed separately. All the materials in demolition today have to be separated and disposed of um, in the proper um venue this is amanda lansing again um thank you dean for that explanation i guess um the concern that the commission has is that um this is a very large project um within the floodplain and the way that the regulations are written you know on the engineered plans in front of us 
we see the majority of the work being um, within the floodplain. And so that's what the commission has to make their decision on is the information that's presented to them. So on these plans, so you're not going to so you're not so you're not going to tear the building down. You're going to just let it sit there. I did not say that. That, that. No, no, that makes absolutely no, no. Listen, that makes no sense at all. These buildings are vacant. We've had people breaking into these buildings. We're trying to demolish these buildings, and we're doing everything possible to stay in compliance so that we're not out of compliance. Every single bit of that material is being brought to a different location so that it's brought to the right location. So what's the alternative? What is your alternative? Because we need answers tonight as to what your alternative. You represent the city. You represent me. What's your alternative? I recognize that these buildings need to come down. There's no issue with the fact that they need to come down. Myself, the other commissioners, we are all for the new police station. I think it's wonderful what, what the city wants to do with this land. The concern is just the way that the regulations are written under the state environmental law. And whether or not whether or not the commission feels comfortable allowing this work under a request for determination of applicability because that's not a state issued permit a notice of intent with the issuance of an order of conditions is typically what we would see in a large project like this what we are trying to understand is just what work is being done as far as breaking ground over here because the entire almost the entire project is within floodplain which is a state protected resource area we have to go by the information in front of us and what the regulations say there's there's no issue with the project itself it's just whether or not we would like to see a notice of intent with more information on it to issue an actual permit for this work. <laughs> so have you been out to the site? I have driven past it, yes. And you didn't go you didn't visit the site? No, we have not, because this came before us all pretty quickly. We are not trying to hold the city up on this project in any way, shape, or form but we do have to be able to make a decision based on the regulations that we're supposed to go by. Um, so, it, so what takes what gets taken out of the ground gets backfilled with material. I don't understand the complication. We're trying to understand what is actually being removed because once you remove it, it has altered the floodplain. So we're just trying to figure out exactly what is being done. And there is a lot of conflicting information that that is what we're trying. They're, they're, to they're tearing down, they're tearing down the buildings. They remove the foundations and then they backfill it with material with gravel. Um, yes, that's, no, I, that's I, what we do with, that's what we do with every site, no matter. That's what we do every time a building is, is taken down. That's what we did at Mr. Credit Union. That was completely in the, in the floodplain. That's what we did at Rosestone Bank, which was in the floodplain. Every single one of them was the same thing. The material comes out and it gets disposed of properly and we backfill it. That's it. Until such time as we get in there and decide exactly how we're going to actually build in the floodplain. That's a whole nother separate process. We're trying to get those buildings down is what we're trying to do. Yep, no, and I understand that. And I do understand that um, that the demolition was okayed for anything that was above the floodplain, which is which is fine. It's, it's more just, um, there just wasn't a whole lot of information. So the commission was just trying to understand uh, what else was being taken out of the ground? So if you could, if, if you're able to, if you could clarify me for me what you mean when you say that a concrete uh, 
slab is going to be removed? Is that, you know, a six foot foundation, you know, deep foundation? Is that just a, an above it's ground? A it's, a, it's a pad that goes around for some reason, whether they're loading docks. There used to be another building up front. There was another building up front. And this is a small brick building in the back where the brick building is, the red stone brick uh, is out back. That's where the school is. That's the footprint of the actual building isn't very large at all. The, the plot that it's on isn't very large at all. The foundation is, is extremely small for a building that size. It's more tall than it is wide or, or um, in depth. So all of that's just coming out and it's going to be back filled with material. That's the extent of it. And, and so the question would be, what else would you do? Like, what else would you do even if there, was, if there wasn't enough information? What else, what extra things would be done that would be different than what you would be doing tonight? When you're tearing a building down and you're removing what's in the ground, which probably isn't the best material in the ground right now, and backfilling it with certified fill. If I may, um, Madam Chairwoman, <clears throat> um, this is Angela Schwartz, the conservation agent for the City of London. There, um, I just want to so, see. Typically, when you work in the floodplain and you're removing material, and, and work in the floodplain is qualified as removing material or adding material. So, they usually always have to go under a notice of intent. I think that's what Amanda is trying to clarify. That the more information they need would be more information on how much material is being brought in, what the ele final elevation is going to be. Uh, which I don't have access to that information, obviously. Okay, so what would make it, what would be different? I guess, help me understand that. What would be different if we waited another who knows how long and and you wanted more information? What, the finished product at the end of the day, what, what would it change? That's what I'm trying to understand. Angela Trust, you want to say on the conservation agent for the city of London, sir. Basically, with the notice of intent, like the commission needs, the applicant has to prove to the commission that they are not altering the floodplain elevation. It's not, there's nothing about the material, nothing about what's there, or what's going to be there. It's proving that the actual physical elevations in the floodplain are not being altered. Um, so they do the work and they have to bring it back to the same elevation. So basically, within, that's usually done under notice of intent um, rather than a request for determination of applicability. And that's the debate that the commission has been having was whether it's can be done on so we right so we take a shot at the elevation before they do anything and then later we take another elevation and make sure it's the exact same elevation that's simple that's minor so what i'm trying to understand is what the final product what is different other than the monitoring or the assurance that the same amount of of, of that, that that the conditions are the same uh, the elevations are the same later what 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 changes i'm trying to understand that so mm -hmm. it, it's not so much uh, this is amanda lansing again it's it's more just um i guess with a with a notice of intent um when we issue an order of conditions there's very specific um regulations that um, and conditions that an applicant would need to adhere to once the project is complete. And I think the Commission's hesitation just in trying to just understand fully what's in front of us is the lack of being able to do that um, under under an RDA. That That's really the difference is that an order of conditions makes it so that we have to um, we would need an as-built plan at the end that basically shows that the elevations haven't um, haven't changed. And you, could do, the and you could do that tonight. You can do that tonight. We have a conservation agent that works for the city. She's on the payroll full time. She can sit on site, on premises, the whole time and monitor the whole project. You can set conditions tonight to the city. This is another city department. If this isn't a private organization. You can say to the city, hey, listen, we want an ele elevation shot tonight. We want to know what the material, you can set the whole order of conditions tonight and tell us what it is that you need and we'll make sure it gets done. Um, yep, no, another this way is to approve it conditional, 
uh, you, you approve it conditional upon. We're approving this conditional upon. You don't even need conditions. You can just say, look, it, you know, we're okay tonight, but here is, here's what we want the city to do, right? Or whoever's in charge of the project. This is what we would like. You can do that. I don't see how that's illegal at all. It's the finished product, product is the same, exact same. Um, if I may, Dean, there's two different permits. So for an RDA, you get a DOA. I, I, a get, I get it. No, no. I've been I've been at this for a long time. I get it. I'm just saying what the end product is going to be. I mean, forget the permitting. Permitting is bureaucracy. What's the end result here? What is the end result going to be when we're done? That's going to make it different. So if you're concerned about the elevation remains the same as it was before construction, then that's easy. We have a full-time person that can make sure she can stay there from early morning till night until the project's done and making sure that John Roseberry is there taking shots to make sure the finished product is the same. So whatever conditions you want, that's exactly what we're going to do. You could do that tonight. This is Amanda Lansing, um, again, Chairwoman. Yep, and I, I understand that. I, I guess, um, you know, like I said, we're, we're not trying to hold this up. We, we really aren't, um, sir. We're, we're really uh, just trying to do the best we can at, at the job that we volunteered to do. Um, I think if there is a way that we could, um, you know, as you've stated, it's, it's basically just if we were to approve this under an RDA, um, with specialized conditions is the just the assurance that when it's done, um, we could have the the engineering firm provide a a finished plan that shows what the um, you know what the site looks like once the buildings have been torn down and everything has been um, restored to grade. Because I do, I do recognize that once the plans are in place to actually build the police station, that you know things are going to change again. So it's really we just want to make sure that in the interim, while that site is there, um, that there's no issues with flood storage if we have a big um, a big rain event. That's really the biggest concern, since it seems like maybe the the building, you know, the police station is going to be done you know, the second all of the demolition is done. Um, no, but once that got, once the contractor gets stopped and has to pick his equipment up and leave, then then the train yard is start kicking. So that's why I say if there's anything that you can do tonight. And if that's the case, I already suggested you take a you have them take an elevation before they do anything. They can backfill it and make sure the elevation is the same. If that's the purpose of what the commission is trying to assure the public that at the end of the day, nothing has been changed. We took something out. We took a gallon. We took a, a, a five-gallon bucket out. And we put a five-gallon back bucket back in. I, I don't see the I don't see the the issue at all with the conservation commission issuing those restrictions. That you don't even have to legally issue it. You can just tell us we're another entity of the city. We're not X Y Z construction company from somewhere else. We're the city. Um, Angela Chabesky, just to clarify, Dean, the city is subject to the state laws as well. That's why we have to do the permit. No, I'm not, 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 don't, Angie, Angie, don't try to suggest that I'm somehow or another trying to pull in that. I'm not. It's not what I said. I said you're dealing with the city. We're another city agency. I'm not trying to go and circumvent the law or anything. I'm saying if, you, if, if there are certain things that need to get done, this is another city agency you're asking or telling, you know, we, we need you to do these. We'll let you move forward, but we need you to make sure that you do the following things and we'll do them. I wasn't suggesting I'm skirting around the law and because we're the city, we don't, we could just go in and rip everything down and forget about the flood plan. It's not what I'm suggesting. I'm suggesting that the commission get together tonight and say, look, if you want to take the, those buildings down, here's what you need to do. And we'll do them. This is a $27 million project. <laughs> there are many engineers that work on these projects. So this would not be a difficult thing uh, to, to, to make sure that we leave the property the way we find it. This is Amanda Lansing again, the chairwoman. Um, so given everything that, that we've talked about, um, I do just need to um, 
ask for a motion from the the commission, um, the other commissioners on on what they would like to do. Um, option one is is issuing this um, under a under a you know issuing a negative. Oh, I'm sorry. I do. I apologize. Just for a matter of um, precedent, I do need to close the public comment period before I ask for that motion. Um, was there anybody else on the call who wished to speak about this project before I call for a motion? Second time, third and final time. Okay. So um, in that case, for for our listeners, the you know option one would be issuing a negative determination um, with the conditions that we are issued a um, an as-built plan afterwards just showing that the elevations that we currently see um, on the plan are the same once they are done um, demolition and we could include our um, our boilerplate that basically just talks about um, best management practices for construction um, or option two would be um, asking for the filing of a notice of intent. So those are the two options that we have in front of us. Um, I think I'm I'm okay with either one, just as long as we have the condition of of receiving that as built plan, just so we know everything's everything's good while the the land sits for. Could be a week, could be a month, however long it is between um, between the projects. So, do I have a motion from either of our other commissioners um, for either of those options? Uh, this is Sam Gallagher. Uh, I'll make a motion to issue the uh, negative determination um, with the added condition that we receive as built plans uh, as soon as they become available following the project. Uh, added conditions that are recently uh, mentioned. Thank you, Sam. And do I have a second for that? This is Elizabeth Ricci. I'll second. And this is Amanda Lansing, the chairwoman. Um, I'll also vote yes on that. So the motion would pass to issue, Angela, I'm not sure, is it a negative two determination with with those added conditions? Hi, Angela Trusty here. Um, that would be a negative three determination. I'll read it in for you just for the record. Thank you. negative three determination, um, the work described in this request is within the buffer zone as defined as in the regulations, but will not alter the area subject protection under the act. Therefore, said work does not, work does not require a filling, not even those intent subject to the following conditions. This is Amanda Lansing. Great, Angela. So, um, if you could get that paperwork um, done and, and to whomever it needs to get to, I would appreciate that. Absolutely. Hey, this is Amanda Lansing. So, so Dean, there's no um, there's no issue. Angela will get that paperwork together for the permit. Um, and the biggest condition we would just like to see an engineered plan uh, like what we have in front of us once demolition is complete. Absolutely. That's that's and and we will make sure we will make sure that Angie's invited. I'm not sure what happened and why she hasn't been attending the meetings or staying on top of what's going on, but we'll make sure that she has a, a actual notice to to attend our meetings. Um most of the city departments are part of the meetings and um but whatever it is that you're requesting, you will not be disappointed. We'll make sure you get all that information back. Thank you. No, we very much appreciate that. Thank you. Have a great night. Thanks. Okay, this is Amanda Lansing again. Um, that concludes tonight's um, special meeting.
Our next meeting, regular meeting, will be Tuesday, July 14th, 2020, um, with a deadline of this past Friday, June 26th. Do I have a motion to uh, conclude tonight's meeting? Uh, this is Sam Gallagher. I'll make a motion to conclude tonight's special meeting. And do I have a second? This is Elizabeth, I will second. This is Amanda Lansing. I will also um, vote yes. So I declare tonight's meeting closed. Thank you guys for your time tonight.